Okay, so we already installed VirtualBox, we configured VirtualBox, we installed PFSense to act as our router, and now we are going to install one of our base VMs for a server. And to begin, let's just go ahead and go to new here in VirtualBox. Okay, so now we're gonna hit next. Now for RAM, I'm just gonna knock it down to one gigabyte. Next. We're gonna create a virtual drive now, create VDI. We want it dynamic, dynamically allocated. Now here I'm gonna give it at least 40 gigs. That should be fine for a while. We're gonna go ahead and check to make sure that we are going to the right location, which we configured in a previous video. It's going to another SSD. So let's go ahead and create it. Okay, so now we're gonna go into settings. And there's a few things in here we want to do. So we, we'll kind of just go down the list here. Um, I think we're all fine there. For system, I want to disable floppy. I want to disable the enable absolute pointing device. I think we'll leave everything here. Processor, we're just going to leave it on one CPU. Acceleration, I'll just leave that alone. Okay, so display, I think we're okay here. Storage, now since we are on an SSD, since we have um, this VDI on an SSD, I want to make sure to select a solid state drive here. That way it tells, um, VirtualBox will be able to tell that OS, hey, um, you're, you're installed on an SSD, so take whatever you know actions that you normally take with an SSD and do them. So we'll go to audio, we don't need no stinking audio. Let's see, network, I'm gonna switch the network to internal, all right. Remember, it's gonna use, it's gonna communicate with our PF Sense box to be able to then go out to the internet. Uh, we, don't, we shouldn't need to change anything else there. Serial ports, we don't need a serial port. USB, I'm gonna go ahead and disable the USB controller, and we don't need no share files or anything like that. So, what we want to do also is, in storage, we want to attach the. Um, ISO for Windows 2012. So we're gonna go ahead and select this. We're gonna choose. They already went to my ISO storage. So we want, let's see, PFSense Server 2012 right here. So we're gonna attach that. All right, so I think we're ready. Let's go ahead and start it up. Remember, we're just setting up the base. We're gonna go ahead and hit next. Oh, thank you, my mouse down there. Install now. Okay, we don't want core. We want the, we don't need a data center. Let's just do standard eval with GUI. So next. Of course, we accept all that. We just read it all. We want to do custom install. Um, that should be good. Let's go ahead and hit next. And we'll let it install and we'll come back here in just a minute. Okay, so now we're here, we're ready. We're gonna go ahead and set our admin password. And finish. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and release my mouse here. I'm gonna go into devices. I wanna remove the, uh, the disk from the CD-ROM drive. Okay, so now what we wanna do is um, we wanna install our VirtualBox tools. So let's just go ahead and log in real quick here. Oh, host delete. So we can do that. Let's go ahead and log in. Okay, now to install the tools, we're going to go to, uh, let's see, in devices, install guest editions. What this is going to do is mount an ISO. You can see right here. Let's go ahead and tap it. Let's run the virtual box, install, we're gonna hit next. And we're gonna hit next. Oops. And we'll hit install. You wanna always trust, otherwise it's gonna come up a lot. And let's reboot it. Install, let's go ahead and log in. Now what I wanna do is I wanna configure the network adapter. Right now it's set for DHCP, and uh, quite frankly, we don't have a DHCP server on this internal network, so it probably has a 
a funky IP. It's probably 169 number or something. We'll see. Yep, 169. Okay. So what we want to do is configure this to be a static because servers you should have static anyways. Um, so let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Local server. You hear my cat in the background over there? She's crazy. Okay. So we want to do Ethernet. We're gonna right click. We're going to go to. In a right click, we're gonna go to properties. Before now, my dog's over there moaning. <laughs> All right. So let's just name. Uh, let's just go with one nine two, one six eight. I don't recall what I gave the PF sensor. I think it was one nine two one six eight dot one dot one. But so this server, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna start this one at one dot eight. Subnet, that's fine. And the default gateway, one nine two one six eight one dot one. That would be the PFSense LAN interface. And for the preferred DNS, what I want to do now is I want to, I'm just going to set it for my home's uh, DNS server for now. Um, it's just during this initial phase, so I'm, you know, it's going to be my router's IP address here at the house. Ten dot. We're going to change this. It's going to change when we set up DNS anyway. So ten two dot zero dot one, and that should be good for now. And let's hit OK. And let's hit OK. Now that we have that set up, we still have to do something with our PFSense box. And we wanted to wait until we had this server up and going. So we need to web into PFSense and do a couple tiny configuration changes just so we can make sure we can get out to um, the internet. Open up Internet Explorer. We want to go to HTTPS 192.168.1.1. Okay, accept the certificate. Uh, continue prompt, let's just close. All right, so default username and password for this is, I think it's admin and then pfsense. Yep, we don't wanna save that. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can go through the settings and actually change it, but we're just gonna go to system and set up wizard. And let's go ahead and uh, maximize this a little bit. This wizard will guide you through the initial configuration. All right, so host name, I'm just gonna leave it pfsense. Domain, I'm just gonna leave it local domain. We can change all this later. Primary DNS server, we can we can make it our, um, eventually we're gonna change it to our, uh, our server's DNS, or server's IP address. But for now, let's just put our 10.2.0.1. If you don't get this done, it, it should still work okay, but we're just gonna go ahead and hit next. Okay, for time server, we're just going to switch this to, let's see, I think that one will do fine. Okay, so for our WAN configuration, it's set static, that's fine. Uh, we don't need to change the MAC address or anything like that. IP address is fine. This is the one right here that needs to be set. It's the, it's, it's telling your WAN where's the gateway, so like, hey, where, where do I send all this traffic from this internal network to? It's going to be your router, your home router's IP address. So 10.2.0.1 for me. And that's the main thing we need to be changing here. Hit next. LAN IP, we're fine with that. And the admin password. We don't want it to be the default because, of course, anybody can figure that one out. Just a little bit of searching out there. Okay, it's going to reload. See if you get back in. All right, WAN connection, LAN connections up. Looks like our internet exclamation point went away. Let's see if we can uh, get out to the internet or something. Oops. Let's see if we can get out to the internet. All right, so we're good on that. So there's a few more things we need to do before we actually run all the Windows updates and everything. So let's go ahead and close on that. So we need to make sure our time zone is set properly here. So let's see, where is our time zone? Yep, here we go. We need to change the time zone. 
to make sure that this is good. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to get any updates. It's going to error out. All right. So I want to also install the .NET Framework 3.5 for this server. So what we're going to do is go to Server Manager. We're going to go Add Roles and Features. And we'll just hit Next, Next, Next. And it's not a server role, but it's a feature. So here we go. We're going to check that. Next. And install. I'm going to go ahead and say restart destination server if it, if it needs it. Okay. So I went ahead and finished. We're going to close that. Now, you know what? I just realized we should probably name this server as well. So we're going to go local server. Click on computer name. Let's just, um, let's see, let's just call it, uh, we're just going to name it Windows 2012 Base. All right, that'll work. Hit OK. OK. I don't want to restart now. So the main thing to do at this point is get all the Windows updates installed. So what we're going to do is, I think we're going to end this video here. I'm going to go ahead and install all the updates, every single update that, that is available here on this one. And um, we'll begin part two with uh, configuring this base system for our linked clones. And uh, all right, guys, so stay tuned. Next video should be coming up very soon.